بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته Today we will start talking about an important topic in the hematology which is encountered a lot in the field of anemia In the start of talking about the anemia, we will start by a classification of anemia and the etiological classification of anemia, which include an important section, which is the decreased building material or the nutritional anemia. The first and the most important type of nutritional anemia, and what we encounter a lot, is the iron deficiency anemia. We consider the red blood corpuscle as a bag full of hemoglobin dissolved in water. And the hemoglobin is divided into two parts, heme and the globin. Globin is a protein formed of a sequence of amino acids, while heme is formed from both protoporphyrin and iron. In order to understand anything related to iron, we must first understand normal iron metabolism. Of course, this is a very important topic clinically and practically. It is very important academically for studying and the exams. We will start with the iron intake until we get rid of it. During this, we will talk about it, where it is, the quantity we need it daily, how it is absorbed, how it is transported in the blood, where it goes, or what, what its function and how it is stored and recycled. We will stress that on that I rely more on recycling of iron than the intake of iron. Then we will talk about the regulation of iron and how to maintain iron in a state of balance. For the excretion of iron, the problem is that iron has no route of excretion. No organ is responsible for taking it out. So, how it is removed? It is excreted by the daily sloughing of cells as sloughing of intestinal cells, exchange of hair and nails, bleeding. I lose a cell that contain iron, so I lose iron. But I can't lose iron as it is. This is a very big problem because to control any substance, its entry and exit must be controlled. But iron has no exit path and therefore it is not controlled except by controlling its entry into the circulation, which uh, include uh, all the entry of iron uh, to the circulation include mainly the recycling of iron uh, from the macrophages more than the intake and the intestinal absorption of iron. Because the intestinal absorption is done for a very small part only to compensate for the small part of iron lost outside the body during dairy cell loss, bleeding, or changing hair and nails, which is a very small percentage. Before starting the lecture, we must agree on some important rules. And the first of these rules is that iron is very, very important for every cell, but it's very, very harmful. Why? The harm of iron is represented in this equation written in front of you, which is a kind of redox reaction or oxidation, oxidation reduction reaction. As iron can be found in oxidized or ferric form, which carries three positive charges, that is, it carries three fewer electrons than its protons. It is also found in the reduced form or the ferrous form which carries only two positive charges. That is, it carries two less electrons than its protons. And then, where is the problem? The problem is that it is easy for iron to switch from one form to the other, as this interaction can go in both directions. With this reaction, free oxygen radical is formed which is caustic substance that can burn anything in the cell and harm it. So, iron is very useful, but it is also very harmful. Hence, we add to the second rule, which is that as long as iron is harmful in this way, it can
can't be found in a free form in the body, and it must be carried on a protein, whether hemoglobin, ferritin, or transferrin, otherwise it will cause harm. From here we return to the third rule, which is that as long as iron is carried on protein, it is in the ferric form and not in the ferrous one, except in one exception, which is the hemoglobin, which must carry iron in the ferrous form to be able to carry oxygen. The fourth rule is that iron must move through the body and must pass through membranes and must be in the ferrous form while passing through the membranes. In what form iron is present in the body and what is its function? It's mostly present in the form of hemoglobin and its function is to carry oxygen, followed by ferritin and hemocydrin and their function is to store iron. Then myoglobin, which is a source of oxygen for the muscle. Then a very small percentage in the form of uh, or present in some very important enzymes and a smaller percentage carried on transferrin, which is, is responsible for transporting iron in the body. For the function of iron, it is mainly used in the manufacture of hemoglobin, whose main function is to carry oxygen in the body. Iron is also included in the composition of some important enzymes that can't work without iron. It is also very important for the integrity of epithelial cells, very important for the manufacture of hemoglobin, which performs an important function for muscles, as it is a the reservoir for oxygen. It facilitates the intracellular oxygen diffusion and get rid of free radicals. In the mitochondria, iron is required to complete the citric acid cycle. It is also very important for the integrity of the nervous system and immune system. For the iron intake, I am interested in knowing the foods that contain iron, the amount that I need daily, and the average intake for me in a normal average diet. Iron is abundant in animal tissues, especially liver, kidney, heart, and meat. It is also found in prowers, yeast, wheat, germ, egg yolk, oysters, dried beans, and some fruits. It is present but in smaller quantities in green vegetables, cereals, fish, and fowls, and in very small quantities in milk, milk product, and non-green vegetables. We need about 10 to 20 milligrams of iron per day, which roughly equal the average intake. Only 10% of this amount is absorbed, which may decrease or increase slightly depending on the body need for iron. For the absorption of iron, human get iron in one of the two forms, heme iron and the non-heme iron. Every form has its way of absorption. The absorption of heme iron is much easier than the non-heme iron because the absorption of non-heme iron goes through many difficulties. Iron absorption of, uh, uh, means that iron is uh, transferred from the intestinal lumen to the circulation through the intestinal cells. That is, iron moves from the intestinal lumen to the intestinal cell through the brush border of the intestinal cell, and then from the intestinal cell to the circulation through the basal border of the intestinal cell. The fourth rule that we mentioned earlier is that iron doesn't move through membranes except in the ferrous form or the reduced form. Ferric form must first be reduced to the ferrous form before it enters the intestinal cell through the brush border. How? First, there must be an acidic pH which facilitates this conversion. 
Therefore, iron absorption takes place in the most acidic part of the intestine, which is the duodenum. Ferric form or this dark red circle in the figure, to be reduced, there must be a reductase in the brush border of the duodenum, which is called duodenal cytochrome B reductase. Ferrous form now can enter the intestinal cell through the brush border. But from any gate, a gate which can transport iron, which carries two positive charges, or divalent, it is called a divalent metal ion transportant, transporter, which is also used in the passage of any divalent metal such as calcium and magnesium, whose body always prefers their absorption over the absorption of iron, which constitutes a major problem in the absorption of iron. If it is mixed in the intestine with any of the divalent minerals, such as dairy, for example, or multivitamins, unless iron is placed in the multivitamins in a form that allows it to be released slowly, so that it is released after all the divalent ions in the multivitamins are absorbed. Thus, the first step of iron absorption took place, which is its entry into the intestinal cells. Here, the iron has a choice of two, either to pass into the portal circulation or to be stored inside the intestinal cells. It passes to the portal circulation if the body needs it, or it is stored in the intestinal cells in the event that the body doesn't need it. Until the body needs it, then it is transmitted to the portal circulation. Or it is lost with the shedding of the intestinal cells into the stone. This means that iron is not fully ab uh, absorbed. With regard the, to the first choice, in the event that the body needs iron, it passes into the portal circulation, and in order to exit from the intestinal cell, it must also pass through a gate. The gate, the gate responsible for the release of iron from any cell in the body, not just the intestinal cells, is called ferroportin 1, the sole iron exporter in the body. Now iron in the ferrous form. Iron must be carried on a protein in the circulation, which is now is the transferrin. To be carried on a protein, iron must be in the ferric form. This means that iron now must be converted into the ferric form after it passes through the ferroportin. How is it? Hephastin, which is found on the basal border of the intestinal cells, performs this task. It oxidizes uh, is it oxidizes iron to ferric form and this is the absorption of the non-heme iron for heme iron the subject is much easier because it is absorbed as it it enters through the brush border of the intestine through a gate called heme carrier protein which is specific for him here heme iron has a choice of two Either it passes into the portal circulation if the body needs it through a gate called feline leukemia virus group C receptor. And here it is carried on the hemopexin protein in the circulation. Or it is broken down by the heme oxidase enzyme into ferrous iron, which either ex exit to the portal circulation of the body needs it via ferroportin or it is stored inside, inside the intestinal cells. In the event that the body doesn't need it until the body needs it, then transmission takes place into the portal circulation or is lost with the shedding of intestinal cells into stool. Therefore, the absorption of heme iron is much easier and is not affected by luminal content of the intestine. What about the effects affecting iron absorption? These factors are the 
terminal battery factors include that the heme iron is easier in absorption than the non-heme iron and this was explained also animal iron is easier in absorption than the plant iron as the animal iron is present in the heme form Ferric iron is also easier in, the, in absorption than the ferrous iron that needs no conversion before absorption. Presence of sugars and amino acids in the intestinal lumen helps iron absorption, while phytate and tannate causes precipitation of iron in the intestinal lumen and inhibits uh, the absorption of iron. For uh, they affect only the absorption of non-heme iron and don't affect the absorption of heme ions. These factors include the acidity and vitamin C. Acidity converts the ferrous uh, form into the ferric form. So, patients with gastrectomy or patients on proton pump inhibitor have a great problem in iron absorption. Illustration of systemic factors affecting iron absorption will be postponed after we understand the systemic iron regulation. After absorption, as we said, the iron will move in the circulation carried on its transporter, the transferrin. Transferrin is a protein which without iron is called avotransferrin. It has two sides to carry two atoms of iron, which uh, with iron it is called holotransferrin. It carries iron in the circulation to each cell, which with transferrin receptor, especially the normoplasts. Transferrin has two types of receptor: transferrin one and transferrin two. Transferrin 1 is the one responsible for iron uptake from the circulation, while transferrin receptor 2 is responsible for iron regulation, which will be discussed later. Transferrin receptor 1 has two forms a transmembrane uh, form and a truncated or the soluble form. The transmembrane form is present on the surface of cells and is responsible for iron, up, uh, iron uh, uptake. The soluble form is formed through truncation of the transmembrane form and circulate in the plasma. Its plasma level is proportional to the level of the transmembrane form on the cell surface. And then how whole transferrin uptake occurs by the cell. It occurs as uh, the uptake of any material from outside to inside cells Holotransferrin attached to transferrin receptor 1 uh, and uptake occurs through endocytosis of the holotransferrin transferrin receptor complex in the submembranous endosome. Now, we need the iron to exit from the endosome to the cytoplasm of the cell. First, it is now in the ferric form as it is carried on the transferrin and must be converted to the ferrous form to be transferred across the endosomal membrane to inside the cytoplasm. The proton bump in the endosome reduces the ferric into the ferrous iron to pass through the divalent metal iron transporter in the endosomal membrane. Now, ferrous iron, uh, iron in the cytoplasm which is either goes to the mitochondria to be utilized or stored as ferritin in the cytoplasm until it needed. The endosome is then recycled to the surface of the cell where the transferrin receptor is recycled and reused while transferrin circulates again. Iron it is stored either in the form of ferritin or hemocytrin, which are cores of iron surrounded by a protein. The protein is much more in ferritin than in the hemocedrin, which makes the ferritin more safe and less harmful than the hemocedrin. That the ferritin can be found in both parenchymal and reticular endothelial cells without any harm, while normally hemocedrin present only in the reticular endothelial cells and not in the parenchymal cells because it can harm the parenchymal cells.
The second difference is that hemosiderin is a golden yellow material and is stained by Prussian blue, the iron stain, while the ferritin is colorless as is not and is not stained by the Prussian blue. The apoferritin is a sphere composed of 24 polypeptide chains, which are a mix of H and L ferritin. H ferritin has a high molecular weight than the L ferritin. The proportion of H to L ferritin differs in different ferritin types. The sphere has six pores to pass iron uh, outside and inside. In order to store to be stored in the form of ferritin, ferrous iron in the cellular cytoplasm must be oxidized into the ferric form. The inner surface of the ferritin provides this function and acts as an oxidase for uh, ferrous iron. When iron is needed, it exits the ferritin molecule and must be reduced again to the ferrous form. Dihydroflavin and the, absorb uh, the ascorbic acid perform this conversion. This figure illustrates the structure of ferritin molecule. Here is the apoferritin cortex, which is formed of both H and L ferritin, and here inside the core are the iron atoms. Here are the types of ferritin according to their size. They differ in the content of both H and L ferritin. The cellular content of iron divides into transient, storage, and functional pools. The storage form is the stored iron the form of the cytoplasm ferritin, while the functional pool is the functional pool in the, uh, either in the form of heme or in the form of iron-containing enzymes. The transient, is, uh, the transient iron pool is an iron steady force exchange with the iron in the circulation. This is a figure for uh, the three iron pools, the transient pool, the storage pool, and the functional pool. For the iron recycling, we agreed that iron is not lost and that iron is recycled. The sensent RPCs are discovered by the macrophages in the spleen, which phagocytos the sensent RPCs and release the hemoglobin. Hemoglobin is then broken into heme and globin. Globin is a protein formed from amino acids which circulate and are reused in the formation of proteins. The heme is either excreted as it is from macrophages through the gate of the feline leukemia virus group C receptor to be carried on the hemopexin in the circulation. Or heme is broken out by the heme oxygenase to release the ferrous iron, which is either stored as ferritin in the macrophage cytoplasm or is exported outside the macrophage through the iron exporter, the ferrocortin, and oxidized into the ferric form by the action of the cereoloplasmin to be carried in the circulation on the transferrin. As we said before, uh, as iron is very important, it is also very harmful if present in excess. We said also that iron has no route of excretion, and thus iron regulation occurs only on the level of iron entry into the circulation. Also, we mentioned that the main source of iron in the circulation is the iron derived from RPCs recycling in macrophages of reticuloendothelial system and that a small percentage of iron uh, in the circulation is derived from the intestinal absorption of dietary iron. We should, we should also remember that the only gate used for iron exit from any kind of cell is the sole iron exporter, the ferroportin one. Thus, if I can control the ferroportin one, I can control the iron entry into the circulation to increase or decrease according to the body need to iron. This is the first and the most important method of iron regulation. To be honest, there are other methods of iron regulation including the control of 
uh, translation of proteins involved in our metabolism as ferritin or transferrin and also regulation of the rate of heme synthesis but the control of iron exit from cells through the ferroportin one and his entry into the circulation will still the main method of iron regulation the main protein involved in this method is an important protein called hepstein so now we must know everything about hepstein from its name it is a protein formed in the liver hep and has an antimicrobial action, uh, action sedin. So the hepstein is an antimicrobial protein formed in the liver. It was even formerly known as the hepatic antimicrobial peptide or HAMP, and the gene responsible for its synthesis is still known as the HAMP gene, which is located on the chromosome 90. But in fact, a small amount of hepstein is also synthesized by uh, other uh, tissues as macrophages, adipose tissue, heart, and placenta. But the rate of synthesis of hepstein in these uh, tissues is regulated by inflammation rather than the iron state. How does hepstein regulate uh, iron? We agreed that the main method of iron regulation is the control of iron exit from uh, through the ferroportin 1. Hepstein causes internalization of ferroportin 1 inside the cells, leaving the cell surface and thus losing its function as an exporter. Hepstein then adds ubiquitin protein to the ferroportin, a process called ubiquitination. The ubiquitin protein is recognized by the lysosomes, uh, the lysosomes uh, which degrades the ferroportin. So, the kit is removed and the iron is restricted inside the cells and couldn't reach or enter the circulation. This decreases the iron in the circulation. But where is uh, the ferroportin present? It's present mainly in the macrophages of reticular endothelial system and a small amount uh, is present in the basal border of intestinal cells. These are the sites of iron entry into the circulation as mentioned before. But what is the mechanism of hepstein uh, regulation? Hepstein is affected by factors uh, in front of you which are the same systemic factors affecting iron absorption from the intestine that we have postponed their illustration. What are these factors? The main factors is the iron state or the circulating iron and inflammation or inflammatory cytokines. Iron excess and inflammation are the main factors increasing the hepstein level. Hepstein is a one of the acute phase protein which increases by inflammation. On the other hand, the main factor decreasing hepstein is the iron deficiency, as well anemia and hypoxia also decreases the hepstein level. Erythropoietin and erythropoiesis increases demands to iron and thus they must decrease the hepstein level to make the iron available and not restricted, as well as the ineffective erythropoiesis. Hepstein level is affected by all of these factors in different ways. Rxs increases hepstein level and vice versa. How? We said before that transferrin has two types of receptor, transferrin 1, uh, transferrin receptor 1 and 2. We said that transferrin uh, receptor 1 is responsible for iron uptake and transferrin receptor 2 is responsible for iron uh, regulation. Here is the rule of transferrin receptor 2 in iron regulation. The figure in front of you illustrate one hepatocyte. Here uh, is the surface of the cell above and the nucleus containing the hepstein gene below. The process starts when holotransferrin reaches the surface of hepatocytes and ends by hepstein production, but this occurs in many steps. The HFE protein, colored blue on the surface of hepatocytes, has a high affinity to transferrin receptor 1. But transferrin receptor 1 has a higher affinity to the holotransferrin than to the HFE protein. 
when the whole transferrin reaches uh, the surface of hepatocytes, it attaches to the transferrin receptor 1 colored orange on the surface of hepatocytes. This forces the transferrin receptor 1 to leave healed attachment with the HFE protein. Then the HFE protein attaches to the transferrin receptor 2, which is colored green on the surface of hepatocytes. Transferrin receptor 2, when attached to the HFE protein, it forces the hemojuvenal colored orange and the more morphogenetic protein 6 colored yellow on the surface of hepatocytes to attach to the bone morphogenetic protein receptor colored pink on the surface of hepatocytes, activating it, which in turn starts a signal transduction including SMAD activation. This signal transduction reaches the nucleus and stimulates the promoter of Hepstein gene to synthesize the Hepstein protein. If we understand this mechanism, certainly we will understand the pathogenesis of the hereditary hemochromatosis, as what we illustrated in the following lectures. In summary, the iron excess should lead to a feedback mechanism which should result in a restriction of iron. This occurs in the normal condition. In hereditary hemochromatosis, a defect occurs anywhere in the feedback mechanism, leading to the loss of the feedback inhibition resulted from the iron excess. So, iron will increase and increase with a, a iron will increase and increase without control, leading to iron overload and what is called hemochromatosis. The most encountered defect always occurs in the HFE protein, but maybe also in the transfer receptor 2, in the hemojuvenal, in the hemp gene itself, or lastly, maybe in the ferroportin. Another information about this mechanism is about the hemojuvenal, which is present in two forms, the membrane-bound and the soluble forms. The membrane-bound form is the one which is involved in the mechanism in front of you. The soluble form is formed by truncation of the membrane-bound hemojuvenal, causing it to circulate in the circulation. An enzyme called metriptase performs this uh, truncation. It is represented in the figure by uh, the blue scissor. The soluble hemojuvenal has an opposite action that it inhibits this mechanism. This mechanism regulates hepsidin level when it increases. When hepsidin increases, the matriptase is produced, causes truncation of the hemojuvenal, leading to the first uh, leading form. First, the loss of its uh, function in stimulating hepsidin senses, and second, the opposing action of the soluble hemojuvenal. This all lead to inhibition of Hepstein synthesis. A hereditary disease is caused by a mutation in the gene of metriptase enzyme called iron refractory iron deficiency anemia. The mutated metriptase can perform its action inhibition of Hepstein synthesis, leading to an uncontrolled Hepstein excess, which in turn causes iron restriction and anemia. Similar to the anemia, this anemia is similar to the anemia of iron deficiency, but this kind of anemia will not be corrected by iron uh, or iron supplementation because of the uncontrolled hepstein excess, which will cause restriction of the supplied iron and hence the name iron refra refractory iron deficiency anemia. These are some of the applied points of this mechanism. Another mechanism of iron regulation by the iron state is the intracellular regulation of iron, in which there is a sensor for iron inside the cell, which will reflex heat sensation to iron to actions which will result in iron regulation. How? There is an intracellular protein called the iron regulatory protein, which has two types iron regulatory protein 1 and 2. The iron regulatory protein 1 in the presence of iron acts as an enzyme and doesn't play a role in this game. Also the iron regulatory protein 2 in the presence of iron is degraded and also doesn't play a role in this game. 
They share a role in this game only when there is an intracellular deficiency of iron. When they will attach to what is called iron responsive element present on the mRNA of proteins involved in iron metabolism. The iron responsive element may be present on the 5 dash end or the 3 dash end of the mRNA. We know that the translation of any mRNA starts from the 5 dash end to the 3 dash end, and when translation is complete, the mRNA should be degraded. Imagine with me, with me what will occur if there is a piece in the 5 dash end of the mRNA which inhibits the translation. Of course, the translation of the protein will be inhibited. On the other hand, what will occur if there is a piece in the 3 dash end of the mRNA which inhibits the mRNA degradation? Of course, the translation of this protein will be repeated and repeated. This piece is present when the iron regulatory protein binds to the iron responsive element. The iron responsive element is either present in the 5 dash end or the 3 dash end of the proteins involved in the iron metabolism. For example, it's present in the 5 dash end of the ferritin mRNA and at the 3 dash end of the mRNA of transferrin receptor. This is illustrated in the figure in front of you. Ferritin mRNA on the left and transferrin receptor mRNA on the right. In cases of intracellular iron deficiency, iron regulatory protein and, uh, 1 and 2 will attach to the iron responsive element in the mRNA of these proteins. Because the iron responsive element is present in the 5 dash end of the ferritin mRNA, when the iron responsive uh, protein uh, attached to, uh, when the iron regulatory protein attached to it, it causes inhibition of ferritin translation. But the iron responsive element is present in the 3 dash end of the transferrin receptor mRNA. When the iron regulatory protein attached to it, it causes inhibition of mRNA degradation and increases the translation of the transferrin receptor. This is the logic. Because during uh, uh, iron deficiency, I have no need to uh, the senses of ferritin. I need that iron uh, 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 will be uh, or uh, the iron become available and not in the form of ferritin. Also, I need a lot of the transfer receptor uh, receptor to catch or uptake the few iron present in the circulation. When there is an intracellular iron excess, Iron regulatory protein 1 and 2 will be will not attach to the iron responsive element and so ferritin senses will be increased to make iron less available and on the other hand transferrin receptor senses will be decreased to inhibit the uptake of the excess iron present in the circulation. This is applied uh, also to all proteins involved in iron metabolism. What about regulation of iron by inflammation? The figure in front of you illustrates the mechanism of iron regulation by inflammation. Inflammation increases hepstein synthesis and hepstein is one of the acute phase proteins. This is expected because in the presence of an embedding organism, iron should be restricted to deprive the organism from iron, which is one of the defense mechanisms against the invader. Epsidin must be increased to decrease the iron availability. How? Inflammation increases the, inf the interleukin 6, which has a receptor on the surface of hepatocytes. This will initiate a signal transduction involving JAK and STAT activation. When this signal reaches the nucleus and the Hepsidin promoter, it stimulates the senses of Hepsidin. This is one theory. A second theory mentions that cytokines and bacterial lipopolysaccharides induces an endoplasmic reticulum stress.
which will increase the expression of cyclic AMB response element binding protein H in the hepstein promoter, colored pink in the figure, leading to stimulation of hepstein synthesis. Then, what is the mechanism of decreasing the hepstein level by anemia, hypoxia, erythropoiesis, erythropoietin, and ineffective erythropoiesis? Before understanding this uh, mechanism, you should note that suppression of hepstein in these circumstances is necessary to increase the iron availability, which either may correct the condition of anemia, hypoxia, or and iron deficiency, or may provide the needed iron for erythropoiesis. Let us start with the mechanism of hepstein suppression by anemia and hypoxia uh, or iron deficiency anemia. We should first understand what is called hypoxia inducible factor or HIF, which is formed of alpha and beta uh, subunits uh, which uh, unite together to form the active dimer. The beta subunit is constituted, uh, constitutively expressed while the alpha subunit is regulated. In presence of iron and oxygen, the alpha subunit is hydroxylated and degraded, and the dimer or the active complex is not formed. In cases of anemia and hypoxia, the alpha subunit is not degraded, and hence the active complex is formed and binds to the hypoxia responsive element in the promoter of the hepstein gene, suppressing the senses of hepstein. Second, anemia stimulates the erythropoietin secretion through the formation of the active HIF complex. Erythropoietin and erythropoiesis stimulate hepstein senses as we will discuss later. Third, the active HIF complex suppresses the pathway of hepstein assimilation by iron excess, which was illustrated before. Fourth, the HIF complex helps in the cleavage of the membrane-bound hemojuvenal through stimulation of the metriptase enzyme or through stimulation of the proprotein called furin, which causes cleavage of the membrane-bound hemojuvenal. This leads to the loss of the role of the membrane-bound hemojuvenal in hepstein stimulation, in addition to the suppressing action of the soluble hemojuvenal. Fifth, the iron deficiency by itself stimulates the metriptase enzyme, which causes cleavage of the membrane-bound hemojuvenal, leading to loss of the role of the membrane-bound hemojuvenal. Uh, in hepstein stimulation, in addition to the suppressing action of the soluble hemojuvenal. Six, iron deficiency stimulates the release of a mediator called gross differentiation factor 15, which is released from the erythroplasts during erythropoiesis and has a suppressive action on the hepstein promoter. And now, what is the mechanism of hepstein suppression by erythropoietin, erythropoiesis, and the ineffective erythropoiesis? First, the growth differentiation uh, factor 15 and the twisted gracilation 1 are released from erythroplasts during erythropoiesis and has a suppressive action on the hepstein promoter. This is an important pathogenesis of iron overload that occurs in thalassemic patients. I hope that the lecture have covered the field of iron metabolism and iron regulation, which is a very important and interesting field, and understanding it is very important to understand very important applied points. God bless you. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.